over my head. I hear music in the air over my head. I hear music in the air. There must be a God somewhere. Oh, when the world is silent, I hear music in the air. Oh, when the world is silent, I hear music. I hear music in the air. There must be a God somewhere. Over my head, I hear music in the air. Over my head, I hear music in the air. Over my head, I hear music in the air. There must be a God somewhere. And when I'm feeling I hear music in the air, and when I'm feeling lonely, I hear music in the air, and when I'm feeling lonely, I hear music in the air, there must be a God somewhere, over my head, I hear music in the air, over my head, I hear music in the air, over my head. Must be a God somewhere. Now when I think on Jesus, I hear music in the air. Now when I think on Jesus, I hear music in the air. Now when I think on Jesus, I hear music in the air. There must be a God So be careful, be careful. Good morning. Good morning. Welcome to worship here at Moultonboro United Methodist Church. It's wonderful to be with you and share this time of worship, and it's also wonderful to have those of you joining us online. Welcome to worship. I invite you to take note of the announcements on the insert in your bulletin. You will see, among other things, that uh, uh, announcement about the next Emmaus meeting and homecoming on September 15th. So I know that seems like it's a ways away, but it'll be here before you know it. Um, so I do want you to take note of that. After worship today, we will have our shelter shower, and uh, Bev will say more about that during our mission moment in a little while. As we continue to gather for worship, let us be mindful of the Spirit here with us, walking the journey of life and of faith together as we worship. If you'd please stand as you're comfortable and join with me in the call to worship. People of God, listen. Wisdom calls and understanding raises her voice. We gather to grow in wisdom and understanding to hear God's word for us. She stands at roadside and cries to her people to take instruction. Let us pray. Let us worship God. The first hymn is Cry of My Heart on the screen or found in the faith we sing, the soft cover hymnals, 2165. Open my eyes so I can see 
would remain standing for our opening prayer, which you can find this week in the bulletin and also on the screen. Let us pray together. God, we give thanks that you have revealed yourself in the words of scripture read and proclaimed among us. We are grateful that you also make yourself known in bread and the fruit of the vine. We thank you for all the people who support and challenge us to be better disciples. Our greatest joy is to experience your presence and respond to you as we do this humbly today. Amen. Please be seated. The first lesson today comes from 1 Kings chapter 8, and then we skip around a bit on the verses, verses 1, 6, 10 through 11, 22 through 30, and then 41 through 43. These passages talk about covenant agreement and talks about God being with the people, both the Israelites who now have a home in Jerusalem in this reading and the temple that they were eagerly building and hoping to have, but also the foreigners who will also come to know God. I am taking this from the contemporary English version. The sacred chest had been kept on Mount Zion, also known as the city of David. But Solomon decided to have the chest moved to the temple while everyone was in Jerusalem on the seventh month of the year. Solomon called together the important leaders of Israel. The priests carried the chest into the most holy place and put it under the winged creatures. Suddenly, a cloud filled the temple as the priests were leaving the most holy place. The Lord's glory was in the cloud, and the light from it was so bright the priests could not stay inside to do their work. Solomon stood facing the altar with everyone standing behind him. Then he lifted his arms toward heaven and prayed, Lord God of Israel, no other God in heaven or on earth is like you. You never forget the agreement you made with your people, and you are loyal to anyone who faithfully obeys your teachings. My father David was your servant, and today you have kept every promise you made to him. Lord God of Israel, you promised my father that someone from his family would always be king of Israel if they do their best to obey you, just as he did. Please keep this promise you made to your servant David. There's not enough room in all of heaven for you, Lord God. How could you possibly live on earth in this temple I've built? But I ask you to answer my prayer. This is a temple where you have chosen to be worshipped. Please watch over it day and night and listen when I turn toward it and pray. I am your servant, and the people of Israel belong to you. So whenever any of us look toward this temple and pray, answer from your home in heaven and forgive our sins. Foreigners will hear about you and your mighty power, and some of them will come to live among your people Israel. If any of them pray toward this temple, listen from your home in heaven and answer their prayers. Then everyone on earth will worship you, just like your people Israel, and they will know that I have built this temple to honor you. Saved a 
Chains are gone, I've been set free. My God, my Savior, has ransomed me. And the good flood, His mercy brings. Amazing love, amazing grace. The Lord has brought His good to me. His word. Chains are gone, I've been set free. My God, my Savior, has ransomed me. And the God flood, His mercy brings. Unending love, amazing grace. Unending love. invite our children and youth to come forward. Good morning. Good morning. How are you today? Good. Good. So I've got some challenges uh, for us to try, and I'll try them with you, okay? So you won't have to do them just by yourself. Um, but these are, these are things that aren't always easy to do, all right? You ready for the first one? See if you can touch your nose with your tongue. The harder I try, I just can't quite get there. That's hard, right? All right. See if you can rub your belly and pat your head at the same You have to put your microphone down for this one. And pat your head at, rub your belly and pat your head. It's not easy, is it? No. You kind of got it. I kind of got it, but that's hard, right? All right, here's, this might be the hardest one of all. With your tongue out, say, I love green lollipops. I love green lollipops. <laughs> I'll try it too. I love green lollipops. Pretty hard. Do you sometimes have challenges in, in every day, you know, yeah. during your week? Yeah. Yeah. Any that come to mind? No. No, that's okay. Um, when, when you do, and it may not always be that you're trying to, you know, rub your stomach and pat your head or touch your nose with your tongue, but when you come across one of those challenging things, when it feels really hard or you want to give up or you're not sure you can handle anymore, remember that Jesus is always there, always there with you. Even if the words don't come out right, <laughs> Jesus is always there. Should we have a word of prayer? All right, let us pray. Dear Jesus, we thank you that whatever comes in, a, in our day, whatever comes in our week, or our year, or throughout our life, you are always there. And we thank you that even when 
life is challenging or hard or difficult, you do not give up on us. Thank you for always, always, always loving us. And help us to love you too. And we pray in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Thanks for coming. The gospel lesson today comes from John chapter 6, verses 56 through 69. And in this, yet again, Jesus is talking about the bread which gives life. But this time the twist on it is that it's now causing confusion and disbelief amongst his followers. If you would rise for the reading as you feel comfortable. Those who eat my flesh and drink my blood abide in me and I in them. Just as the living Father sent me and I live because of the Father, so whoever eats me will live because of me. This is the bread that came down from heaven, not like that which the ancestors ate and they died, but the one who eats this bread will live forever. He said these things while he was teaching in a synagogue at Capernaum. When many of his disciples heard it, they said, this teaching is difficult. Who can accept it? But Jesus, being aware that his disciples were complaining about it, said to them, does this offend you? Then what if you were to see the Son of Man ascending to where he was before? It is the spirit that gives life. The flesh is useless. The words I have spoken to you are spirit and life. But among you, there are some who do not believe. For Jesus knew from the beginning who were the ones who did not believe and who was the one who would betray him. And he said, for this reason, I have told you that no one can come to me unless it is granted by the Father. Because of this, many of his disciples turned back and no longer went about with him. So Jesus asked the 12, do you also wish to go away? Simon Peter answered him, Lord, to whom can we go? You have the words of eternal life. We have come to believe and know that you are the Holy One of God. The word of God for us, the people of God. Thanks be to God. <clears throat> you may remain standing for our next hymn, Father, I Adore You, on the screen or in the faith we sing on page 2038. Please be seated. <clears throat> so the focus of my message is, is the, the shifted a little bit from the, the sermon title, although it still talks about covenant and community, but, um, but the emphasis is more on difficult things, difficult things. But first, would you please pray with me? Gracious God, May the words of my mouth and the meditations of all our hearts together be acceptable in your sight, O Lord, our strength and our Redeemer. Amen. So I returned yesterday from four days at Camp Wanakee with the confirmation class from our cluster and also from some other churches in central New Hampshire. And uh, yesterday, at the conclusion, we had a little time on the ropes course. Um, some of you may have seen a ropes course before. There's a, a both high and, ropes, uh, high and low ropes courses, and they usually involve 
uh, challenges, whether it's uh, maybe getting, how do, you, how do you get yourself through a couple of suspended ropes uh, without touching the ground, or uh, walking across a log, or, or something similar without falling off. Um, and it usually involves working together with people. And one of the things we also learned about was how to, when somebody's up on the ropes course of how to, how to properly spot somebody, and it usually was six or more of us to make sure somebody would, would uh, stay safe. So the, the piece we were on, so imagine in your mind a wire. It's the kind of wire that would hold up a, an electrical pole uh, to stabilize it. It was that kind of wire. And it went from one tree to another tree, then turned about 120 degrees. Uh, and the wire went to a third tree, and then a fourth tree before coming back to the first tree. And in that first segment, there was a, a rope, but it was, it was, it was uh, kind of loosely hanging there between the two trees. And in the second segment, there was a rope that went diagonally halfway across, and another rope that came up the other half from the, from the, down at the bottom of the wire up to the tree, like about to head level. Uh, and then on the last two segments, there was just a loosely hanging rope that you would use to help you get across. Going out, it was over your shoulder, and then coming back, it would be, um, you'd be working your way towards the rope. So all the students who wanted to do it uh, did it, and then, of course, naturally, they started looking at their pastors and counselors and said, well, don't you want to do it? <laughs> it's like, you know, who could say no? So one by one we did, and it was my turn to, to get up on that. And I'd been wa I was one of the last. I'd been watching what other people had done, and I thought I knew the right strategy. Um, but it became very evident about two steps in <laughs> that my balance just wasn't with me that day, and I was leaning severely. I imagine about like that. And I was only upright because my spotters were holding me <laughs> in place. And, and I should say, some people made it all the way across. Some people made it uh, a little way. Some made it halfway. So there was no, it wasn't any particular competition. It was partly for the experience of it. But something told me, because there were very few people who needed that much help from their spotters <laughs> to stay up. But something told me to keep on going. So I'm... I'm making my way on that first segment at that angle with my spotters kind of <laughs> holding me up all along the way. Uh, I got to the second part. Um, I got about, if I, as I recall right, about halfway across, and then I started to lean again because you had to reach down to pick up the other rope when you were halfway across. And, uh, you know, then I started leaning again. And, and uh, that, c that continued all the way until I was somehow to that last segment, and then I just kind of made a run for it got to the other side, and uh, I think I crashed through somebody taking a video of it as I, as I uh, almost fell off the tree. But it was, it was hard, and I could not have done it quite literally without the people there uh, holding me up and keeping me from falling. It would, it just, at least for me, there were a couple of students who were amazing. They had uh, uh, just incredible balance. Uh, <laughs> I was not one of those. Uh, but it got me to thinking a lot about the difficult things that we all face. Some of them may not be as insignificant, relatively speaking, as walking across a wire. But I know that you all can talk about times in your life that have been difficult. When you have been challenged by the circumstances or pushed hard to look at something in a different way, or even having your faith put in a precarious situation because of a life moment that you had not anticipated or didn't see coming. So today's gospel lesson is really important to see in the context, as Tamara alluded to, the context of the larger uh, gospel uh, scene here. So again, this is part of this ongoing part in chapter 6 of John following the feeding of the 5,000. So they have recently seen this amazing, amazing miracle. And again, remember, John is the one who speaks of the word becoming flesh that is uh, incarnated 
in the flesh, right before us, where we can see and touch Jesus, and we know Jesus from our own lived experience. And he continues on in this teaching about eating flesh and drinking his blood, and as, as I discussed last week, that is really hard even for us to hear today. Uh, but he was talking about that incarnational experience of, of really having an experience of, of Jesus, of Jesus becoming just completely and thoroughly part of who you are. But it was hard for the disciples. They had watched what Jesus had done with the large crowd. They had observed some of the other miracles along the way and his teachings, and they finally said what had been unsaid for a while, which is, this is, this is hard to accept. If you ever, maybe you've ever, uh, if you've um, been in a classroom setting or listened to a, um, a speaker, maybe a pastor, and you heard something and thought, oh, I don't know if that's, I don't know if that's, I, I don't know if I can believe that. I, I don't know if I can go there. Well, they were there and then some. Uh, this is really hard to accept. And I don't know, if, did you catch at the end, after that discussion, a lot of them left. I thought that was really interesting. A lot of that, we usually don't see this in the Gospels. We hear about the crowds gathering and the crowds being excited. And yes, we know about the struggles of the disciples, but, but they hang in there. But here, a lot of them left. They didn't all stay for the next teaching. They didn't all stay for the next day. They didn't all wait to see what the next miracle might be. Some of them left. Of course, we don't know exactly what was on their minds, but I, I gather from the context here that it was probably just too much. They were being asked to do too much or give up too much or to, sus to suspend belief more than they were willing to do, and they just decided it was, it was just better or easier or simpler to turn away. And in John's gospel, interestingly enough, this is the first time when, it, right also at that very end place, where it says, and the 12 were left. The first time they're referred to as the 12 in John's gospel. They didn't all leave because they were still the 12 out of all those people. Now on one hand, that can give us some hope because we have seen people, we've been at events where not everyone was maybe as inspired as we were, and whether it was not coming back to a, a worship setting or a Bible study. But it's also a reminder not to be complacent about our own faith. Because sooner or later, and many of you already had the sooner, but sooner or later, somewhere along the way again, we will be faced with a teaching or an insight or a reality that is just really hard to take or hard to believe. And we might be tempted to just say, you know, God, I'm done. I'm, I'm just, I've had it. This is just too much. I was um, really interested this week hearing a, a, a story about research uh, that is being done about a space elevator. I don't know if any of you have heard about um, some of this research, <clears throat> and the idea is that a, a satellite up in geostationary orbit, 22,000 and change miles uh, above the Earth's surface, above the equator, and that there could be, now this is not like just any old cord or any old rope, mind you, but a, a, um, a very strong, uh, with some of the new materials that have been developed in recent years, um, a strong cable stretching from the satellite to a fixed point somewhere on the equator, that large loads, we're talking about in the tons, could conceivably be moved up into orbit or back down to Earth. Uh, and as I listened to it, and they had a really excellent person explaining the science of it all, but it was just, and I've watched enough science fiction that I, I, part of me says, well, anything's possible, but then it was just hard to, to believe because, you know, I haven't seen it yet. Um, I can look at a drawing, I can imagine in my mind, but like, how would that work? What about the winds and 
What about the Earth's rotation and um, what about you know what about something wrong in the manufacturing process and the the cable breaking or I had all these thoughts. I wasn't sure if I could quite quite believe it. Often in our life, and it's not going to be maybe always that dramatic or that grand of a piece, but always in our life, we're going to come to those moments where what we see is too difficult to believe, or we think that nothing difficult will ever come, and it sets us up for trouble. This is what happened to Solomon in the Old Testament lesson. Uh, David was the first king of the unified kingdom of, of the 12 tribes of Israel, and Solomon, was, his son, was the second. And there was a thought that this would be a kingdom that would reign for a long time, if not forever. And you might have heard it said, uh, God had said to Solomon, as long as you keep my commandments, someone will always sit on this throne. Well, we know that throne's not there today. In fact, Solomon was the last of the kings of the unified Israel before they split into two kingdoms and then eventually one and then the other were conquered. What seemed like it was going to last forever in the days of the temple being built and the tribes coming together was rather uh, fleeting. So how do we overcome these difficult moments when they, they inevitably fly at us? And there's me, a couple of clues here that are really important for us. One is covenant. Covenant is, is, in the biblical sense, is an agreement between two parties, and it's usually described as between God and some or all of God's people. It's different than a contract. You can have a contract, and you're focused on, you know, the word. You agree to maybe pay X dollars in exchange for Y services, or... Um, you pay so much a year as part of a mortgage, for example, towards owning a house, or you have, you have details that you're obligated to follow uh, in that contract. Now, a covenant can have those details, but the key to the covenant is not, I'm not saying this is unimportant, but it's, it's not the details in it, but it's the relationship. It's the relationship that is critical. Think about somebody, and obviously sometimes you have a covenant with people you're not always fond of, but think about somebody you really love, somebody who means a lot to you. Because of that relationship you have, you most likely are, you will go to particular lengths to, to make that relationship work, um, to not let them down, to not disappoint them. And of course, we do sometimes, but... But yes, you, in, in those kinds of relationships, have things you've agreed to, whether explicitly or implicitly, but the thing that makes it work is the relationship. One of the challenges with Solomon, actually with David too, and with Solomon and those who followed, was they weren't always good at keeping their relationship up with God. And when they struggled with that, often the covenant fell apart. But God offers us that same kind of covenant, that same kind of relationship with the offer of life-giving grace and all that is needed for that is to follow. Simple but difficult. All we are called to do is to love seemingly easy to understand but a lot harder to do. So the second piece there is the, the idea of community, that you're never, or at least you don't have to be, alone. I mean, it, and it's interesting, isn't it? I, many of you, maybe all of you have read about how in our society today, as increasingly interconnected as we are in some ways, how we become more and more isolated because we are connecting maybe on social media from a room in our house rather than having coffee with a friend or um, a night out with... Uh, a neighbor, or whatever it might be. Our faith calls us into community, as we've done this morning, and as we do in a variety of other ways, so that we can have those relationships amongst each other, and when it comes to difficult things, 
difficult matters that challenge us, that push us, and that really um, can be difficult to either understand or to follow through on, that the community is there to help us get through. Sometimes, like when I was on the ropes course, they were literally holding me in place so I didn't fall off that cable. Now, you may not have had anyone just holding you up physically, but you can talk about somebody who has held you up when you had suffered loss or held you up when your dream job disappeared or held you up when you lost your belongings in a fire or a flood um, or other disaster, or held you up when your plans went awry, or held you up when you were suffering in the face of injustice, or held you up when it seemed like the world outside didn't care about your feelings or you as a person or anything else in your life, or held you up when it seemed like the world was falling down all around you and maybe there was nothing left worth living for. That's what community, genuine community in Christ does. We hold each other up in those challenges. We do a lot of other things too, but we hold each other up in the midst of those challenging times. And we know in the human experience that faith is not a guarantee that we won't have them, and that's where we sometimes get into trouble. It's when they come, how does your faith help you move through that time, and how does your community hold you up so that you can face the challenge and be able to come through on the other side to face what comes next. Our gospel lesson talks about how difficult that is because it meant for some that they had to leave their comfortable places, if not literally, then at least the kinds of things they were doing with their life behind. It meant for some people they would have to change how they would relate to other people, especially those who were, if you think of the kinds of things Jesus did, ministering with the least and the last and the lost and the hurting and the hungry and the thirsty and those without homes and those without standing in society and on and on and on. All the people that at least some segment of society said was not important or was not worthy and Jesus <coughs> saw them as people. It's hard to do. Even in this day and age when we imagine ourselves as fairly enlightened people, we still struggle with how Jesus was able to relate to people of so many different, uh, from so many different backgrounds, with so many different ways of looking at the world and doing things that society at the time thought was not right, and he still offered the grace of God. And even when much of the crowd left, he did not leave. If any had come back, he would be there. And for those who remained there at that moment, the twelve, he was still there. He did not give up. So we have the covenant from God. We sometimes struggle with it. God is always faithful to, to that relationship. We have community. And the reminder, the reminder, particularly within both, is that God does not give up even in the face of the difficult parts of faith, whether you've learned something that challenges your assumptions about who Jesus is or whether a life experience makes you question what you've perhaps believed your whole life or whether you've watched somebody suffer and wonder how could God do that and I hope you remember the series from earlier this summer um, as we, we gave a lot of attention to that. Through the covenant God offers and the grace that's part of that, through the community we have together and the ability of God to never give up, we, and, and so much related to that, we have what we need to get through those challenging times. So what are you, my question for you this morning is what are you being challenged by? What, what is pushing you? 
what is challenging you? What is making you ask a question in your life or maybe this morning? What are you wondering about and, or even wondering if you can overcome or get through? And then I hope as you're asking that question or pondering that piece, you can see you have the resources you need from God and from the church of Jesus to overcome those challenging points. It's unfortunate uh, in Solomon's case, even with all of his famous wisdom, it wasn't enough to keep him from straying from his relationship with God. In our gospel today, even the sight of amazing miracles and um, life-giving actions, what Jesus was asking people to do in many ways to give up the kind of life they had known to lead a different one was too much, and they turned away. But still the invitation comes to all of us. Will we follow? Will we go where God asks? And when the challenges come, will we draw upon our resources to meet them together as people of faith? My hope is that the answer is yes, because we certainly know that God will never give up on us. Would you please pray with me? Holy God, we offer to you uh, from our hearts the challenges in our faith journey at the moment. It could be something very personal. It could be something of what we observe in the world that has so much hurting and brokenness and much of it touches our lives as well. It could be a nagging question whatever it is, help us offer that question, that struggle, that challenge to you. Help us to receive your grace in return um, and to know the answer may not always be easy. It may not always be simple, but that you will walk that journey with us. You will not give up, and we thank you for being part of that journey, for always offering yourself, your full self, even your very son for us. We thank you. In that name of Jesus, with the help of the Holy Spirit, amen. And we have a special mission moment today, and Bev will present that for us. Good morning, everyone. I am so, I'm so excited today. Um, today is the accumulation of the uh, shelter shower, and um, we're going to have a brunch downstairs, so don't miss that. But I just wanted to remind you that you are the hands and feet of Christ on this earth his ambassadors and outreach does this project year after year and year after year it grows and this year um, we're gonna hit three thousand dollars I know it we're almost there and I'm sure that today we'll finish that off I'm, I'm really excited I want to thank each and every one of you for your help and a special thanks to Sue Scudder who's right back there She's worked so hard getting those cards and keeping them in order and collecting it for us. So, um, a big thank you to Sue. I hope you'll join us um, downstairs for brunch. I have one little sadness is that Bill Wilderman won't be here today, but we have sandwiches, Bill, and he loved that. He was our secret little elf for outreach. If we couldn't do it, Bill could. So. Please remember that your contributions to this 
a starting point, keeps people safe, keeps children safe, and provides for what they need at this horrible moment in their lives. And I thank you so much for all that you do, and Outreach Committee thanks you too. Thank you. And that is really exciting. We're just just at the cusp of the goal, and hope to put that put over put it over that over the top today. Um, but it's also a good reminder for us that so much of what can be difficult in the world is people's everyday experience, and this uh, the shelter speaks to the very felt human need that um, so many of our neighbors are living right on the edge of life, sometimes in the face of violence or. Uh, economic calamity. Uh, there's so many different ways any of us can be in that kind of moment, but but thankfully there are those hands and feet that help remind us of the grace of God. Thank you. So that's a good segue into our time of prayer. If you have a joy or concern, uh, maybe you have a special introduction you'd like to make to uh, do that. If you just raise your hand so we can make sure we get a microphone to you so everyone can hear. Uh, I want to ask prayers for my uh, granddaughter, Caitlin, who's having surgery right now for a probably ruptured appendix. Um, we went to one of the, seems like, forever birthday parties we have in the family now, like constantly, yesterday, and I took her to urgent care, and then eventually she went to Concord Hospital, and uh, she has three little boys, one of them named after me, thank goodness, but... Um, <laughs> but she really needs prayers. That's not a not a easy thing, and she just gave birth a month ago. So, uh, prayers for Caitlin. Certainly, keep Caitlin in our prayers. Yes, we'd like to ask for prayers for Kate's sister, Marilee. She went through breast cancer a couple of years ago, but it has uh, surfaced in another location in her body, and she'll be going through a PET scan within a week or so, so she definitely needs all the prayers you can send her way. We have some more joy in that Jeremiah, the young man that we've been praying for and helping out with as he tries to recover from a stroke at age 42. He's standing, He's able to walk some with steps, and he's taken some steps even without his cane and bar. And it, it's a really exciting time. He's trying to get home. He hopes to be home in, or somewhere in the next two or three weeks. So keep those prayers coming. They've certainly helped him along. Mm. And Bev, he's still at the hospital? Correct. At Elliot. At Elliot, okay. Thanks. But we've been excited to see the progress along the way. And thank you all for your prayers ongoing. I have a joy. It uh, was a joy to be at, as I mentioned earlier, Wanakee this week. Um, it was the first, uh, something I experienced that many of you have, I hadn't, which was spending an overnight, three overnights there. And um, I can see why so many of you uh, really love that place or why it has meant a lot to so many uh, connected with this congregation. It was also, though, a joy to work with colleagues from really, uh, I kind of, I forgot to count this week, but it was something like seven or eight churches in uh, roughly in central New Hampshire in a way that, that I don't often get to do. And uh, with a little time, you know, you have time at meals to really get to know people, to build some community. And uh, so I really appreciated that. And uh, my gratefulness to the congregation for being one of those sponsoring churches. So thank you. Any others? If not, then let us be in a spirit of prayer. Gracious and holy God, we thank you that you hear all our prayers. We sometimes wonder, well, what could you possibly want with somebody like me? And yet your grace is so immense so beyond even our understanding as to being able to envelop and care for the eight billion plus souls on this planet. And it's amazing. Help us to, to receive your gift. 
uh, to not be afraid to see the value and worth you place in us at, from the very moment that we were made and to see your hand in the lives of each person that we meet or that we encounter. We thank you that whether we are feeling in a joyful place today or are concerned whether life is really heavy and dark or light and buoyant, that it doesn't matter what it is we have brought with us today for you have offered yourself to us most especially through your son Jesus and the continuing work of the Holy Spirit. We know that the journey of faith is not always easy. We know sometimes we get off track and we forget our, our values and we harm other people. We take actions sometimes without even realizing it that demean or degrade or destroy. But you don't expect perfection for us to follow. And certainly if you did, you wouldn't have any on this planet. So remind us that there's grace enough for us and the opportunity to follow you. And though it is challenging and not always an easy way, uh, that, that there is a place for us and that you will be there to accompany us. Just as you did with your disciples through all their struggles, who followed you throughout that journey, including when you taught them to pray, saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. As God so richly blesses us, each one, and the community of faith with the continuing provision of grace, so we receive now, as an expression of that grace, our morning tithes and offerings.
of God, receive our gifts, the treasure in these plates, the time that we give, and the talents that are part of each and every one of us. That in the face of difficult and challenging times in life, that your grace is more than sufficient. Remind us that you are there with your gift of grace always to guide and assist us and help us use these gifts to be an expression of that love in this world. For it is in your name we pray. Amen. Amen. And you may remain standing for the closing hymn, Blessed Assurance, on the screen or in the red hymnal on page 369. As you're walking through life, maybe uh, feeling like you're on the high wire sometimes and feel like you're bending way over, about to fall off, remember that God is there to hold you up. That when you're involved in the community of faith, the community is there to lift you up. And that no matter what, God will not give up on you. And so we go with the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, with the love of God and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit, now and forevermore. Amen. Father, hear our prayer.